I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hello there, you've been asking me for quite a long time for a proper Notion walkthrough. And this video is exactly that. I'm going to show you exactly how I organize my Notion setup, how I divide my pages according to topics and according to purpose. And I will try to show you as much as possible, although of course some of the pages have very personal information that I will not be able to share with you. And other pages are about projects that I will show you or talk more about in the future. So my main Notion setup is basically composed of shared pages and private pages. In my shared pages, I basically share all this info with my fiancé or my video editor. In my household main page, I have a ton of info. I have a home journal, which is everything about the house. I have a family journal, which is things like meal prepping and things about my dog and recipes. And then I have a section for finances. So in my home journal, I have a bunch of stuff going on. I have Project New House, which is basically the main page where I store all relevant information about a new house that I'm going to move into in the next few months. So I have a lot of very useful information that sometimes you forget to list and you forget to add that info. And there are some things that, although they sound basic, you tend to forget them. So I have a move out checklist, a move in checklist. I have the roadmap for all the process of buying a house. So the decor project is still in development and I have a lot of things going on. I have the decor project divided into like main pages and then by division. By the way, you're going to see a lot of things written in Portuguese, other things written in English. That's because I'm Portuguese, but I mean, most of my job in YouTube is in English. So I tend to mix the two languages in my personal workspaces. For instance, in my sustainable home list, I have a bunch of links to websites that sell sustainable items or furniture made in Portugal, accessories, decor made in Portugal. And I like to just compile all this information in case I'm looking for something specific. Then I have more, you know, specific pages. For instance, I have my balcony, which has a page for flowers that I would really like to grow in a future balcony. I have links for very useful articles, for instance, this one on how to grow cut flower gardens in containers. And of course, I have tons of placeholders in my Notion for things that I want to add information to, things I want to research, but I still haven't had the time yet. Then I also have here other very boring information like budget and credit with all the information on banks and mortgages and, you know, boring things like that. I have a page for meetings and visits. This was very useful when we were looking for a house and I had to write some notes on our visits and our meetings. I have a page for possible Airbnbs in case I need some place to stay at before I transition to the final house. Here I have a template I'm very proud of. This is very recent and it's called my cleaning schedule and list. First of all, I have a section for specific instructions on how to clean some things with natural products. For instance, if I want to remember how to clean a mattress properly step by step, I have this article from the Spruce, which I downloaded and I just copied and pasted the most important info as well as that cute illustration. So I have everything compiled inside Notion. I then have a table with maintenance by month and season. And here I basically list all the months of the year and the exact specific tasks I want to accomplish in that particular month. Of course, some of these are quite obvious, but I prefer to have everything written down and just tick those items off my list as I do them in case there's something I forget or something that I really don't remember at the time. So I just prefer to have it written down in Notion even if it sounds a bit useless for me, it's really helpful in making sure I tackle all of those items. So next in my home journal, I have a very recent template, which is my plant journal. The only plant I've listed here is my fiddle leaf fig tree, which is currently thriving. And then I also list the place where I put the tree, the date where it was last watered, acquired on, last repotted, as well as some notes. For instance, here I said it needs to be repotted in July. 
Then I have a page for general info and contacts that are very useful, for instance, for maintenance, for security, things like that. Of course, I will not show you this because it's quite personal, but I also list this here in case I have to share it with anyone. So here I have a page for my inventory. This may seem a little bit useless, and I mean for most objects it may be, but what I like to list in here are all of those items and appliances that have a warranty, that I need a receipt, so for instance if there's something wrong with that item, I already have the receipt at hand so I can present it so that it can be repaired. Those kinds of items like appliances, video game consoles, uh, a robot cleaner, things like that. I like to keep everything nicely organized in here with all the important documents and the user manuals so I will not forget anything. Then we go to the family journal. Here I have a bunch of very classic templates. In my meal planning page I basically have a calendar view Every single day I add meal ideas for lunches mostly, because we usually never have dinner, like a proper dinner, you usually have leftovers. So I do this because it makes grocery shopping much easier. I have a list of all the meals during the weekdays, and then in the weekend all I have to do is gather all of those ingredients so I know I have everything I need to cook those meals during the week. I also have a recipe box, and this one is for all the recipes I find online. I don't have a bunch of these in here because I'm very used to using a Thermomix to cook, but every time I found a different recipe I will list it in here, as well as if I've tried it, whether it's a breakfast recipe for dessert, uh, something savory, something sweet. Then I also have a page dedicated to my dog Chester. This one is very important because, especially in terms of vaccines, I have a really hard time figuring out when he needs to be vaccinated next because, of course, this depends on the country, but for instance, here in Portugal, we have a booklet of vaccines. Sometimes you can't find it, sometimes you can't really read the doctor's handwriting. So I just prefer to have everything in notion with the reminder system scheduled so that when that month or that year starts, I know that he needs to have that shot. Then I have here a, a wardrobe page. This one is completely empty. I basically inserted this in Notion so that I can list all those items that are more natural or items that are of a higher quality. And I know exactly when I purchase them, their size, care instructions and things like that. Then I have a wedding template, and this one you maybe, if you've watched my video on wedding planning, you know this template. It basically has all the information on vendors, guests, um, the catering, dates, uh, details about the church, everything of the sorts. It's in here. And finally, I have a page dedicated to cars. And when I say cars, I mean car maintenance, insurance, things like that any kind of paperwork, any kind of inspection, maintenance things, they all go in here so I won't forget and I have them everywhere I go because sometimes it's very useful to have all of these documents on your phone whenever you are out and about and I just like to keep everything in here. So after that we have my YouTube main template and this one I share with my video editor and she's able to see all the details on most videos that she needs to do um, the editing part. So I basically have a main table and this is where the magic happens. This is where I plan every single video. I have a column for the upload date, for the status, where I say if it's in planning stage, if I'm writing the script, if, if I'm filming, etc. Then I have the video title and these ones are actually the original scripts. This is what I write when I'm planning a new video. I write the editing instructions here as well, in case I need to write those, as well as the sponsor read at the end. So this is the nitty gritty of making YouTube videos. I also have the sponsor listed, as well as view and sponsor performance, in case I have those informations available. There's also a main page for Patreon, and here I list uh, the people who are subscribed to the $5 tier, those are the people that I list at the end of my videos, in case you've noticed that. I also have a list with posts that I will not show you, because if you want to see the posts you need to be a Patreon, as well as principles I share over there. 
I also have more technical things like a list of resources that are very useful to make videos, a visual guide with the new type of rebranding for 2021, so this has the fonts, the specific colors for the rebranding, as well as transitions and effects that I like to use in my videos overall to just have a very consistent branding throughout. This is a thumbnails revamping list for videos that have thumbnails that I really don't enjoy and I want to replace soon. Then I have a mood board for my 2021 channel branding, and this is where everything for the rebranding started. I just made this huge mood board with colors, textures, and images that I really liked, and all the rebranding of the channel just followed this mood board. This is an example of an archive in my Notion. This is where I store all pages that I really don't need right now, but I mean, storage space is free so I will just archive them in case I need to reference something in the future. This quick notes section is very interesting. This is actually my main repository of information when I need to take some notes and I don't really want to search for a place to insert it inside Notion at the time. So usually whenever I have to jot something down I will use this quick notes pages and then I'll reorganize that information into other pages in the future. This is my work main page and of course I will not be able to show you this. This, when I say work, it's not YouTube, it's actually my full-time job. I work uh, as a kind of a legal advisor in the financial slash banking sector. So this is where I have everything from work group information, meetings, a knowledge base with theoretical information on what I do, as well as more, you know, practical info. The archive with all of the projects I've already made, I archive them here, as well as a section for drafts. This is what I use when I have to draft an email or draft a message for someone and I use this space in Notion to have that set up. And then I'll copy and paste it into Outlook or Teams or something of the sort. Here I have my consulting page and this is for type of organization slash productivity consulting I do with some people. Uh, I have a list of clients and some general documents on what I do. That's actually available as the most expensive tier on my Patreon, so in case you're curious about how that works, you can message me over there. And then there's my personal main page. First of all, I have leisure, and this is basically a bunch of trackers for things that I really like to do. So I have a series slash movies list for 2021, where I just list all the movies and series I've watched, I rate them, I give them a category and show the dates where I watched that particular show. This is completely useless because I don't do anything with this information, but I really like to see this list building up over time. I do the same thing with video games, once again, completely useless, it's just fun for me to track all of this information, and it's easier also to give recommendations anytime someone asks me to recommend a series or a video game or something of the sort. And then of course I do the exact same thing with books. I have a reading tracker where I list the name, the author, the category, the dates, the rating, and whether I finished that book or not. And in my reading list, I basically just brainstorm and add all of the books that I really want to read. These are books that I heard about or heard in a podcast, a YouTube video, someone recommended them to me and I list everything here so I don't forget. And I can access this list anytime I want to purchase a new book. Going back to the main page, I have also a bucket list for trips I want to make and a main bucket list. For the learning section, I have courses and degrees and my 30-day learning challenge, which I will start on April 1st. In my courses and degrees, I basically have all the info on, for instance, in this case, the postgraduate degrees I was taking last semester, and I have a bunch of notes in here for each one of my classes, and this is basically the same thing as a notebook, but in Notion format. Each one of these pages has the notes for that specific class, I write them down as if I was writing in a word processor. 
And Notion is very simple and very minimalistic, so it's very easy to write down the notes of any type of class or lecture in here and have them nicely compiled in table format. Then I have a workouts list. This one was so useful for me this year. And it's basically a giant table with a workout plan for me. I tend to work out every single day, but I like to really mix things up a little. So I do a bunch of ring fit adventure workout as well as yoga and fitness blender workout programs. I also link anything I need to link in case I'm following a YouTube video and I have a link for my meal planner. And before you go, if you're interested in creating a system that allows you to build habits like Notion or any other type of app or program, I highly encourage you to watch Thomas Frank's class on productivity and habit building. And this class is available for free with your Skillshare trial. You usually have those online courses for like more than 100 bucks for one or two hours of classes. And then you have Skillshare, which gives you access to its entire library of thousands of classes for less than $10 a month. And even if you're not willing to start paying that price per month, that's not a problem. Because for a limited time, the first 1000 people using the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, which gives you more than enough time to watch Thomas Frank's class as well as many others. Using this promo code also tells Skillshare that you came from this video, which is always nice if you enjoy my channel and want to keep supporting this type of content. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I will see you next week. Bye guys!